uh, Brooklyn, New York, they have a little few pages just enlisting some beliefs. They said this is the creed of Abu Hanifa. And however, the work seems to be spurious, as some scholars have pointed out, like Zahabi and others. So they would call it Sheikh al So this is just another term that they use. Uh, another term that they would use, and this is probably the last one, is called um, a Sharia. A Sharia. And we find uh, this in a classical book by a scholar called Al Ajurri. Al Ajurri, he has a book called the Sharia, and if you open it up, you, you won't find matters uh, concerning the Hudud, prescribed punishments, or concerning buying and selling, or concerning marriage, but rather you'll find an exposition of the faith of Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah. So these are five terms which we will find in the classical writings, all indicate what we now call Aqidah. It seems that in our day, the prevalent term, or the parlor of the scholars, basically, is Aqidah, and that's why the term I, I chose to use for the title of the lecture. And that's the term which we started off with the definition. But these terms are basically synonymous. And they're just different ways of describing that foundation of faith. Now, of course, we said the correct, or not the correct term, or the better term, the term which is found in the Quran and the Sunnah is what again? Iman. Iman. So somebody was to come to you and argue with you and say, okay, where is it that you find the Tawheed, the Sunnah, the Sunnah, the Sunnah, the Sunnah, the Sharia, and so forth, Aqidah in the Quran and the Sunnah, we say, no, this is Al-Iman, what Allah has described as Al-Iman, and what the Prophet ﷺ has described as Al-Iman, and these are just synonymous terms to describe that reality, which is referred to as Iman in the Quran and the Sunnah. And it, in itself, it's not an issue whether uh, you want to call it an Iman or you want to call it something else. Is there any reason for using these terms other than using Iman itself as the uh, Allah and the Prophet? Right. Well, there's, there are some reasons for it. One reason is that as, you know, Islamic civilization sort of um, uh, progressed and so forth, uh, knowledge became uh, codified. Okay? And this is just a, just a, and so the people start to become specialized. When the Prophet وسلم, would teach his companions, they wouldn't have, okay, today we have a lecture on fiqh, you know what I'm saying, today we have a lecture on tawheed, uh, tomorrow we're going to be on grammar, and uh, so forth. No. But as the Islamic civilization uh, flourished, they started to specialize and uh, codify their knowledge and write specific works concerning specific branches of knowledge. So this is a, this is a uh, characteristic of all civilizations, whether it's uh, based, the civilization is based upon something on revelation like the Islamic civilization, or upon pagan civilization. That as they become more advanced, they start specializing in codifying. The second thing is that there, are, there were certain reasons for this. A lot of times that these terms were in reaction to uh, beliefs held by people of bid'ah, of, of heretics. For instance, when the heretics start to speak about Allah, okay, like the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiyyah, which are two heretical sects, they would talk about Allah and His names and His attributes in an incorrect manner. And they would call this Tawheed, they would say, this is, you know, the correct belief concerning Allah, His oneness, this is monotheism. The scholars then came out and they would write books to refute it, you know, and they would use terms like a Tawheed. Uh, for instance, you find Imam al-Bukhari, who died in 256, he has Kitab al-Tawheed, and in one and in one uh, narration of Sahih al-Bukhari, it says, وَالرَّجُّ عَلَى الْجَحْمِيَةِ It's a subtitle. So it's the book of Tawheed, of affirming, in this sense, Allah's names and attributes, and uh, the refutation of the Jahmiyyah, which is a text which appears uh, in, towards the end of the Tabi'in, towards the end of the second generation, prior to Imam al-Bukhari, and they denied Allah's names and attributes. This is an example. When the people of Bid'ah, of, of heresy, start to talk and deny certain matters, the scholars said, no, this is the Sunnah. This is what the Prophet is saying for, so he often calls Kitab as Sunnah, and so forth and so on. Some of these terms, uh, there is some sort of questionability concerning uh, some of the understandings, or some of the uh, application, like Aqidah uh, and Usul al-Din, some scholars are critical concerning some of the finer meanings of these terms, because it seems to separate between belief and action, and therefore it can have an incorrect uh, import to it. Like it seems that the term Aqidah, as I was reading one time, Sheikh Bakr Abu Zayd was mentioning, that it might have, it's really that this term was first used by the Ash'adi, uh, and it has some sort of uh, significance. But then later on it became, uh, you might say, uh, employed by Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah and has a certain specific significance of Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah. So that's some of the reasons, and that's another topic unto itself. But the important point is that uh, 
outside of these terms which are, were used in the, the parlance of the Salah of Jama'ah, there are other terms which are, which mean the same thing in the sense that they always refer to what people believe in, but they are hallmarks of people of bid'ah, of, of, of and people of heresy. They used to describe their belief system. One is called Ilmul Kalam. Okay, Ilm meaning knowledge, and Al Kalam here means uh, dialectic. Okay, awesome. Dialectical theology, I think, is the, uh, the, uh, the maybe the way they translate it from Oriental. So, Ilm uh, Kalam is a term used to describe belief by people, usually of heresy of big I like the Ashari's and so forth. A second term, which you find used and used, well, you should all be familiar with, I'm sure, called philosophy. Alright? And philosophy. That's been the Arabic term. But philosophy, uh, okay. So the, uh, the point is that philosophy is a term which refuse, refers to beliefs and so forth, but is, is used usually by people of, um, ill belief, like people did ask people of heresy and also disbelievers. Likewise, another term is the solo. It also refers to certain beliefs, and this is called Sufism, and sometimes mysticism. <laughs> and uh, fourth one is theology, uh, or al-ilahiyat is a term. Arabic way of saying it. This is also a, like, and finally metaphysics is a classical term used by usually people of ill belief. So the point is, what I'm trying to say is that when you see these terms, right, they usually describe belief systems of people who have incorrect beliefs. But the idea, the general idea behind it is they're trying to describe that which certain people hold in their heart as truth. The terms which were used by the Salah of the Hasim Jama'ah, as I said, that, uh, are six basically, which is put Aqeed over here, and the term which is employed by the Quran and the Sunnah is Iman. Okay? Yes. Elm al-Mansa. Right. Elm uh, al uh, logic in the sense that he's the science of logic, uh, is sometimes similar to Ilm al but there's different though, because Ilm al usually the issues that they discuss in logic is different than the issues they discuss in Kalam. In Kalam they try to prove a logic existence, and then they try to prove the, um, the, the, the prophethood, the revelation, and then the last thing, the particulars of faith, using certain arguments. While Ilm al discusses things like the definition, what is the definition, what is Al-Hajj, and, you know, what is uh, the types of argumentation, you know, demonstration and so forth. They have different types of uh, argumentation and perhaps you know, all will have an opportunity to share that for you, you know, if you have a good discussion. These terms are used by people who believe, but it's not to be. Well, yeah, usually. Usually when you find these terms, you will find them used uh, by people with who have incorrect beliefs. So what I'm trying to say is that in the general sense, we're all talking about aqidah. Because I said in the beginning of the term aqidah, when we say just a pure sense, aqidah, we mean whatever a person believes, whether that belief is itself is correct or incorrect. People describe that belief, while there are ways that the scholars of Hasid describe that belief, and there are ways people of bid'ah, of, of heresy, describe their belief. They usually use these terms, and also sometimes people from different religions, after we find a religion, will use terms like this. The term which you find the Quran is in that. This is just a brief introduction uh, to that term. <laughs> okay, the next definition we're coming to is now Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Because we say that this is a discussion of the creed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So who are these Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that we're talking about? Now, I have chosen to translate this Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. I'll write it for you in Arabic. Uh, okay, uh, and I'll try and put it right in.
I usually translate this, the, the adherence of the Sunnah. And the Jama'ah being assembled. That's right. <laughs> and the assembly. Okay, so the Adherence to the Sunnah, the Ahl Sunnah, and Al-Jama'ah being the assembly. What does this term mean? Well, Ahl Sunnah means those people, uh, to be Ahl of something in Arabic, uh, sometimes we translate as people and the people of the Sunnah, it really means the adherence, it means those people who have uh, adhered and followed to the Prophet ﷺ Sunnah, not only in beliefs, of course, but also in their deeds, in their way of worship, in their uh, way they regulate their affairs, in the sense of meaning their buying and their selling and their trading, in their marriage and divorce, in their politics, in their uh, matters of peace and war, and so forth and so on, and likewise in their morals in their behavior, in their uh, manners and so forth. Uh, this is of course all embodied in Sunnah and Ahl Sunnah al-Jama'ah means, Ahl Sunnah means those people who adhere to this standard the Prophet ﷺ came with, this religion, the Sharia, the Sunnah or way of the Prophet ﷺ. The Sunnah literally means the way. And over here we mean, whose way? We mean the way of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Now the Jama'ah, they were called the Jama'ah for three reasons. The first reason is that because they have gathered themselves or they have assembled themselves upon this sunnah, this truth, and they have not divided themselves into different sects. And I will relate to you a hadith shortly about how the Prophet ﷺ foretold how his ummah was divided into 73 groups. So they were as jama'ah because they gathered themselves upon this sunnah. So there's a source, there's a foundation. Likewise, and they didn't divide themselves into different tracts or groups or factions or parties in matters of religion. Okay? Second of all, that they adhere, uh, they're called the Jama'ah because they adhere to a certain understanding by the Prophet's companions. Or, and the first three generations, you may say, a of Salah, because they adhere to their unanimous consensus, their Ijma'ah, and they adhere to their understanding of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, this is the second reason why they're called Jama'ah. The third reason why they're called Jama'ah is for a reason, it's because they gathered themselves among, around the truthful Imam, uh, the political leader of their time, the uh, religious Imam, and in the sense Imam not in the religious sense but in the political authority of their time, and not revolting out against themselves, in the sense they didn't split themselves off and revolt out against them. So these are three uh, reasons why they're called Jama'ah. The first reason because they have gathered uh, upon the Sunnah not dividing into sects. Number two, because they've gathered to the understanding of uh, the Salaf, and I'll explain who these Salaf are, and their unanimous consensus. They are referred to the Salaf over here. Unanimous consensus, which we call the Jamaat in Arabic. And three, because they do not revolt against the Imam. They gather themselves because they gathered upon the Imam and they did not revolt against you know, Alex against them. I'm waiting for the on part of questions concerning the third point now. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, first, uh, the first answer is that Jamal to the question that I have for the Nadia. Now, um, people translate that sometimes as the majority. Now, what is the proof of that each one of these that, that the Jama'a refers to as maybe the Sunnah or Salaf al-Qalih or um, the Imam of the Time? 
Yeah. That comes from the points when we derive our points. How do we understand the Quran and the Sunnah? There's, there's a sort of understanding, but quickly, in case we don't ever get to that, that point in the lecture. Uh, the, because it was in Mr. Uri said, it, Mr. Uri said, the Jama'ah, whoever is upon the truth, even if it's by yourself, or even if you alone are.